Welcome to the SRS Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron J. Babiar, and I'm the Training Director of Support Raising Solutions. Whether you're a new ministry worker or a veteran looking to increase your competence and confidence, Support Raising Solutions seeks to bless you in your quest to be a spiritually healthy, vision-driven, fully funded Great Commission worker. My guest today is Ray Pang. Uh, Ray uh, is from Taiwan, and uh, we, I, I, gosh, I, I don't know how many times we've met face to face, but it's probably close to half a dozen, Ray. Uh, but I don't know mm. that I've ever had you on the podcast before. So welcome, mm. my friend. Glad to have you today. Uh, good to be here. Thank you, Aaron, for uh, having me. Uh, yeah. This is great. Uh, you know, we can actually talk uh, through, uh, you know, internet and even we are wars apart. You know, this is good yes. to, to hear from you. Yes, well, I know that it takes uh, it takes you quite a quite a bit of time to get to Arkansas, and of course, I've I, I've been to Taiwan. And I know it took me a long time to get there, so mm-hmm. being able to click some buttons and get this going truly is a blessing. And uh, and I really think that I think what you have to bring uh, as far as content today to the podcast is going to be a blessing as well. Um, you know, there is a lot of preconceived ideas and notions about support raising on a global scale, mm-hmm. uh, but that's certainly true uh, in in basically uh, the the Chinese diaspora or diaspora. I've heard people say it different ways. Mm-hmm. I'm probably killing it. Um, how do you how do you say that, by the way? No, I, I, you know, most of people overseas we don't consider ourselves as diaspora because we are living in a different context. Uh, but uh, we we all have like uh, Chinese roots. Uh, right. Uh, but you know, so diaspora. That's what I heard often. <laughs> right. Right. That's fair. That's fair. And and we won't get into all the geopolitical uh, stuff with uh, with China <laughs> and Taiwan. It would be fascinating to do that. I've actually seen some memes on it recently that you <laughs> and I would probably think were funny, and I'm sure it would offend others. So we'll just leave it right there. <laughs> um, but uh, we are thankful that God's God's kingdom is bigger than uh, in any any country lines or uh, regions of the world. And I'm thankful that you're a brother in Christ and that you could be with me today. Yes, that's right. So as we kind of dig into this topic, um, challenges and solutions in your context, um, yeah, tell people a little bit more about yourself and and uh, uh, about about your role and just kind of the, the different things that you get to do with missions mobilization. Right. Yeah, um, you know, I'm 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 a I'm a mission mobilizer. Uh, that's usually how I identify myself. You know, just about ten years ago, I have no idea what it means. Uh, but uh, I got more involved with uh, a mission. Uh, you know, in general, uh, I, w- I was uh, I was serving how just about twenty years ago, starting my my time as a, as a missionary and serving overseas. Uh, with Operation Mobilization on one of the mission ships. And about 10 years ago, I, I, uh, I, was, uh, uh, I was involved with uh, mission uh, mobilization in Taiwan and serving as a general secretary for uh, United Missions of Taiwan, which is uh, more or less a, a platform, a, a, an alliance for all the different mission efforts, mission agencies and churches, uh, you know, mobilizing the Taiwanese church to involve with missions um, and also have the global perspective. But also mm-hmm. at the same time, I got to um, really explore the, the possibilities, uh, especially for serving a, a bigger picture, which is a global Chinese uh, in that kind of scale, because we all use the same uh, language or language uh, um, and and. Well, the the written uh, format is a bit different, but also, mm-hmm. but but we can still use it. So a lot of uh, resources uh, like coming from different parts of the world, especially like uh, perspectives, Kairos, and also uh, some materials from uh, CMN, uh, like Explore and Go Mobilize, are really coming handy, especially in in a, in this context when when people are really excited to to get involved with. Uh, War evangelism, uh, yeah. especially in this era. So that's pretty much in my road now. Uh, okay. As Let me ambassador. ask you a quick question about that because yeah. sometimes there's confusion. Um, uh, sometimes, particularly with different organizations and whatnot. Um, 
Uh, like I'll start with myself, you know, technically I work for Exago Ministries, but we have a long time partnership with Support Raising Solutions. And I'm honored mm-hmm. to be one of the main voices and, and trainers and whatnot with that. Now, Support Raising Solutions is under the umbrella of the Center for Mission Mobilization, who you just yes. mentioned, CMM. So now what it, how, what is your relationship with CMM? Because for some people, they might not realize that that's not that's not a new thing, um, although I know sometimes there are like little changes and formalities and things like that. So for those that might be wondering uh, about that, about that relationship, just kind of explain that to us if you would, please. Oh, yeah. And I, I got to know uh, about the ministry of uh, CMN about about four or five years ago. And I, I was uh, really invo- uh, in, involved with uh, a lot of training and, you know, uh, mobilization materials. Mm-hmm. And I became uh, the uh, glo- one of the global affiliates. I heard it's called the Global Partners now, uh, about three years or three or four years ago. Uh, so I was more like a, a representative uh, for uh, promoting uh, the 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 idea and the vision of CMN, uh, you know, in in a, in a Chinese context as a whole. Mm-hmm. Okay, great, great. And so Center for Mission Mobilization, it's based out of Fayetteville, Arkansas, which is pretty mm-hmm. close to where I geographically live. But um, it definitely has some partnerships with, with, with key people like yourselves, like yourself around the world. So mm-hmm. um, I know this is not a big Center for Mission Mobilization commercial, but sometimes people are confused <laughs> about <laughs> where, where CMM starts and stops and SRS and Exago. And, and, and you, you have an organization as well in Taiwan that you've worked with. Is that correct? What, go ahead and throw out yeah. the, the name of that. Yeah, it's called United Missions of Taiwan, UMOT. Yeah, yeah. Right. But I'm, I'm right now the, uh, the chairman on the board. Okay. But, but I'm more involved with, uh, you know, uh, movements that looks on and a global mobilization network uh, Great. nowadays. Great. All right. We've thrown out everybody's uh, uh, organizations and platforms and stuff like that. Let's dig into <laughs> let's dig into <laughs> some of the, the meat. Now, of course, you and I didn't pre-rehearse this, but I did ask you to send me a, a few bullet points as far as your thoughts on our yeah. intended topic today. And yeah. for the listener, we, we've just been trying to talk through uh, all sorts of different things, of course, on this podcast. But for, for today's intent is just to talk about support raising and some of the th- some of the the ways that that looks and and n- n- not just you know the, the the Chinese diaspora, but in Southeast Asia and maybe even specifically to Taiwan. So, uh, Ray, thank you for you know organizing even even a couple of thoughts that, that way. And let's hmm. let's start with some challenges. Actually, let's let's focus in on challenges and solutions at least from your context and um you, you you just gave me like three bullet points i'm kind of i'm going to ask you to unpack these for us one at a time mm. if that's okay yeah and sure the first one that you said was comparison what, what 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 did you mean by comparison and why why that's a challenge or solution in your context yeah and, um especially when you talk about um uh, global chinese diaspora you're talking about maybe a a, a new immigrant uh family to another country or you're talking about some chinese background by second or third generation of americans or europeans you know so sometimes it's really hard to uh, just uh, say oh this is that right so mm-hmm. um for example why when i say comparison because when when it comes to the field for example there are a lot of uh, people got involved with you know mission work or or you know Charity works in in, in the big so called the big country, men in China. Uh, so you're coming from, for example, Singapore or Hong Kong or Taiwan or from the states. Mm-hmm. So you're working the same team. It's sometimes it's really easy to 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 have that kind of comparison between your backgrounds, sure. your uh, in terms of uh, you know you know your language ability, for example, your uh, your legitimacy as a Chinese fluent uh, Mandarin speaker or not. But uh, when you talk about uh, raising support, you know, where you come from, sometimes that will become a pretty significant issue, mm-hmm. you know, because for some people it's pretty easy to raise a certain amount of support, uh, which is very challenging uh, for someone else. So that kind of you know, comparison sometimes, I, I you know, f- for, for some of the people I ask, 
uh, around and uh, about the challenges for, for you guys. They said, oh, yeah, I sometimes just feel envy. Uh, sometimes it's feel like, um, you know, I, I am not uh, good enough because for those people, they are easy to, uh, are, are, are their work any better? Maybe not, but, you know, why is it, why God had been you know, treating us this way and mm-hmm. we'll have some kind of bitterness. Mm-hmm. I don't know, that, is that, does that ever happen to any other, you know, context but for global chinese speak since we we all come from different backgrounds like mm. singaporean the hong kongese and italianese and a missionary from china and so yeah. that kind of comparison sometimes is easy to occur but but that's probably not the case for for other contexts you know i, I don't really know to be honest with you it, it seems to me as mm. if that's often um the the case on, on a global scale um mm-hmm that there's always the comparison. Um, and, 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 and mm. in no way do I delegitimize what you just said. I am, I, you know, you, 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 you lived it, you believed it, you've seen it, you, you've experienced it. Um, but you know, sometimes I even see that, uh, in, in the U S and it might be mm. a slightly different context, but, uh, you know, right there, there's 50, uh, United States. And I think I have heard someone from, from every state, at one mm. time or another, come to me and go, well, you know, people, people won't support missionaries, missionaries where I'm from because, you know, insert ex- excuse or reason here. And I've heard people say that who are from very affluent places. And, and, and they, they say, well, you know, our cost of living is so high. Our, mm. our real estate yeah. is so high. Everything's so expensive. People don't have anything left to give. Um, and they live in one of the, one of the most affluent uh, cities in global. Like I'm not going to mention it because I'm not <laughs> trying to call anybody out. But we all know that America has a few cities that do have high cost of living and really good jobs yeah. available. And blah blah blah. Um, I've also heard people on the opposite end of that spectrum. Again, I'm just sharing the U.S. comparison, mm. uh, or they go, "Well, I'm from a more rural place. I'm from this." This place uh, that's, you know, it, it doesn't have a lot of money. Uh, mm. Our cost of living is low, um, but there aren't, you know, we don't have big tech industry things or anything like that. And and in both cases, um, mm. comparison is what's going on. And there are different living standards. There are different costs. Um, I I know that to be true. Um, what Why that is such a one of the, the the first things maybe it's not the first thing but it's often one of the first things that people will go to um i, I don't fully understand that exactly mm. but i i know i see that a lot on the u.s side of things so i guess you know hearing what, what you just shared that doesn't surprise me at all that mm. that that's going on in, in a southeast asian context I, that might just be kind of a, a human condition thing. i know um yeah. And I don't know. I mean, you have kids too, but I have kids, and one of my children, which shall remain unnamed for the sake of this podcast, <laughs> uh, he came out the womb blaming and comparing all the time. Oh, well, brother got this, sister got this. I didn't get mm. that, you know. And and hey, I'm getting in trouble for this thing, but forget this terrible thing I just did. Go get my sister because she did something too. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> I do think comparison is a legitimate thing, um, yeah. for sure, and I think it's on a global scale. But I imagine there, there there's some uniqueness, um, particularly mm. with you don't have state. I mean, you, you don't have multiple U.S. states. You, you have multiple um, cultures and and uh, countries just yeah. within Southeast Asia, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I think the uh, what you say is absolutely true. Uh, but you know, just if you're working in the same team. Um, sometimes it gets more uh, of that kind of uh, comparison and the bitter taste. And I don't say that's healthy, but that, that's, a, that's a reality, actually, especially yeah. if you're working somewhere overseas, not your own context. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, very good. Very good. Well, I appreciate you pointing that out. Uh, I, think that, I think that's a big one for people to be mm. thinking about as far as challenges. Um, now, let me ask you this. From a solution standpoint on comparison, when you have seen that in play, I realize there's more more than one way to probably solve that, but yeah. maybe you've had some key conversations with people where you've helped them unpack that a little bit and let let go of the comparison. But you know, I'm not saying I'm not saying disacknowledge. I'm not saying pretend it's not there. But um, how, how have you overcome that in in your context? 
I, I think the comparison will always be there, but uh, I, w- I will say this: uh, the the we, we need to look at it in a, in a healthier way. Uh, when you're working together, you need to appreciate that we all come from a very different b- background, or and, and we're now serving together or working together. We need to have some kind of certain degree of mutual respect. Mm. You know, uh, I think this is one of the uh, one one of the core. Uh, agenda about about support raising solution is spiritually healthy you know when, when you when you are actually serving together as if for as if for uh, the same vision you should focus more on the things you need to accomplish together instead of you know where you come from uh, either is a it's a better context or worse context so um, and i think the you know we, we need to all come back to uh, the reason why we are here or serving together. Mm. Um, or else the, this, this comparison will be endless until the day we see the Lord. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and I guess a uh, 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 silver lining in that too is if, if God has called you uh, to, to do his work, um, he didn't give you a, he didn't give you a get out of you know get out of it pass based upon uh, your country of origin or your zip code or mm-hmm. where you're at in the world. I mean, your call your calling is your calling, and God 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 knows you know he, he both knew and he currently knows your circumstances, and yet he still calls you. So it's not like um, that comparison thing is going to somehow de- delegitimize what 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 God has asked of you, right? Mm, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Well, the next thing that um, you you had mentioned just briefly when we were preparing for this podcast is that there, there's commonly a challenge of legitimacy. So, talk, talk with us more what you mean about legitimacy, yeah. right? I, I think we uh, we could uh, go back a little bit about um, you know mission mobilization uh, or holistic mobilization, uh, what we all, all believe in. You know, when when we're doing the perspectives of Kairos or even Explore, we, uh, I think that at the uh, the very last chapter, we always challenge people that saying, no matter who you are, you you have a you have an important role in God's you know bigger picture, right? The, the big story, mm-hmm. and so even your housewife, your your graphic designer, your web designer, you are a farmer or whatever, you you can all play a role in in. In, in finishing the task, of uh, finishing the great uh, commission, right? So uh, with that being said, however, often people realize when they want to serve, uh, there are always some kind of uh, bar or, or glass ceiling somewhere and saying you are not legitimate mm. uh, for your role. So for example, if, if, a, if, if a young college graduates and being called to do uh, a mission overseas. So the very first thing his church or her church will say, well, you know, what, 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 what did you do uh, uh, in terms of so-called the church ministry within the last uh, three, four years? Well, we said, yeah, we, I help this, I do that, you know, I, I don't really have, yeah, go to, go to the Bible school seminary and spend three, four more years over there. Mm-hmm. And then you can come back and talk with us. So uh, the the reason I'm I brought this up is um, because in in the in the in the Chinese context, especially in the Asian uh, church context, mm-hmm. and very often people will see uh, you as uh, are you are you ordained? Are mm-hmm. you uh, are you a real missionary? But right. you know, as, as a mobilizer, we often say you know. You can actually serve the Lord uh, if you're an accountant, you're yes, you're you're a sports analyzer or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. And you can you can find your role, but I think for support raising, often people will challenge you by saying, "Are you legit?" Mm-hmm. And and you need to answer these questions, especially not just coming from, uh, you know, outsiders for people. Yeah in your own family, uh, for people in your own church. Uh, and, and these, these harsh questions need to answer. Mm, yeah. 
Support Raising Solutions is most known probably for the book that God asked, or perhaps the two-day intensive boot camp support raising training, or maybe even this podcast. But the reality is that though these are great resources for people raising their salary, what about if you have a smaller need? What if you still want a healthy perspective of raising up partners instead of begging for money for your short-term need like a summer mission trip or perhaps an internship? Well, SRS has something for you. There is a free workbook and leader's guide to walk you through some basic fundamentals of a perspective around building a small team of partners. This is for people probably going to raise less than $1,200 US per month. And we wrote it just for church missions and interns. So it's available under the resources tab at supportraisingsolutions.org. Hey, I don't know if you've heard, but Scott Morton has put out a new book called God's Presence in Your Fundraising, and it has 40 readings and prayers. And it's just a beautiful book because it brings Scott's rhythm into just thinking about what God has for us. And so rather than trying to make a point by just talking you into his way of thinking, Scott frequently invokes scripture to illuminate how God sees the topic at hand. It's refreshing to the mind and soul of rookie or veteran kingdom workers who are weary or anxious about doing the honorable work of inviting others to partner in building God's kingdom through prayer and financial support. So make sure you try and pick up God's presence in your fundraising, 40 readings and prayers, and you can find that on cmmpress.org. So, you know, I, I certainly see that uh, on the U.S. side of things sometimes, although it does feel like we're having a cultural shift away from some of that, um, for better or worse. But from from a Southeast Asia standpoint, um, you know, it, as, as people deal with that challenge of, or I guess you could say people questioning their legitimacy, um, how wh- what are some of the the solutions? Well, what, what are some of the ways that... Uh, you know, that, that people getting involved with, with kingdom work are able to to address that? Of course, I know one of the answers is, yeah, they, they might decide to go get some formal education or ordination. Um, but are, are there some other ways to, to to deal with that? I mean, in a healthy way, I'm not I'm not just saying blow people off and be rude and say, well, I know God, so shush. You know, that's that's probably not the way to do it. But yeah, what, what are some what are some solutions for engaging with with that tension? Yeah, um, I can I can share with you some of my thoughts, but I I could I couldn't be that optimistic, especially that I have okay. been through very much the similar thing. Okay. Because, well, one of the reasons is I I came from a a, um, a church background. My church is more like a a brethren tradition background. Okay. So so no matter is a is a full time a worker or missionary or or a minister. We don't really call them pastor or, you know, with that kind of, you know, title. Mm. So we are just brothers and, and sisters who serve the Lord. So I, I, me personally, I never got ordained. I don't really want to be ordained if, if just for the purpose of getting easier pass, right? So I myself have, have took that route, uh, and which is a bit challenging sometimes uh, to, in some people's eyes, it are legit. I think we need to be uh, have have a healthier perspective as as a you know servants of of Lord's work, yes. Um, especially uh, for those who 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 are like they they are really good in what they're doing. For example, I just mentioned about uh, a, a, for example like a graphic designer. You know, it's really good if you can have some kind of uh, missiology or theology uh, training. Um, but in many, uh, uh, many missionary work or um, organization, we do need these kind of professionals, right? Mm-hmm. And you're, play, you're playing such a big role, important role. I think for, in terms of support raising, this is very important for people to see you're actually contributing to a, a bigger my picture a a bigger role in, in God's kingdom instead yeah. of just somebody needs a job, yeah. right? And so I think it's it, it it really needs some kind of education, um, and also more more uh, open minded uh, people within the church. Yeah. I think the um, uh, courses like uh, explore or, or perspectives that can really help um, for for people to open their minds. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, there's a, there's always going to be that tension there of, um, you know, you, you do want to know that if you're setting somebody up uh, to partner with them in ministry, that they're able to actually do the work, right? Like I, yeah. M- Marky and I get to support a bunch of missionaries and, you know, we, we want to know that they're, they're ready, you know, <laughs> that, yeah. that they're good to go. Um, but also I, I, I can imagine that from a Southeast Asia context, um, that is, you know, that, that exists as well. Uh, but, but there can be that, there can be a tension there when, uh, you know, we expect somebody to have uh, a, a graduate seminary level mm-hmm. of theological training when they're, well, I'll use your example, when, when they're a graphic designer. Um, nothing wrong with them having uh, that that level of, uh, of education, uh, but also if they're going to work for the for the mobilization agency and they are primarily in graphic design, um, they're probably not going to be preaching too many sermons when I need to pull, pull on their on their yeah. uh, deep, long theological education. Is that does, does, does that sound fair? Yeah, of, of course. But I, I think I think there is a there's a line somewhere that you can you can actually have a balance. Yeah, yeah. Well, I even and I'll, I'll again leave all the names out of it. But I am aware of uh, someone I know who recently is a young adult, uh, didn't mm-hmm. hasn't finished college, uh, uh, but was was feeling the Lord leading them to take a break from college and just do full-time ministry. And there were two different ministries that wanted them to come and serve with them. And mm. um, the, the first one that they were going to go forward with, the one person in charge of, uh, of hiring uh, just said, well, no, sorry, you never finished your college degree. But the work had nothing to do, <laughs> like it wasn't important that they have a college degree for that particular ministry job. Uh, mm. But then the different ministry that was right down the road was like, oh, we'll take you. <laughs> They're mm. lost our gain. And, um, mm. There were, I know that there were pastors that were urging the uh, the person who's in charge of hiring to to go ahead and hire that person uh, at that church. But you know, the 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 guy didn't have the full on college degree yet, so he was he was uh, yeah he he was removed from consideration. And there was a lot of a lot of different conversations and things went into that, where I think there was a general consensus that that was mishandled. Uh, based yeah. upon his degree or lack thereof, uh, but you know sometimes that's that that question of legitimacy. Yeah. Um, there are other times when that's really important. You know, it's really I, I want someone to have read the Bible more more than once when they're going to be doing some some Bible <laughs> teaching, right? <laughs> so, yeah, I think that line is kind of difficult um, mm. to establish, but I, I can imagine in Southeast Asia that that's that's a very real real line that, that you deal with as well, particularly as someone is moving into a, a position where they need to, to raise support, you know, potential partners want to know, are they, are they prepared to do this? Are they going to do it? Well, they're going to represent yeah. the kingdom. Well. And so uh, mm-hmm. I wouldn't say that's, that's out of bounds. I, I'd say it's fair, but dealing with that challenge uh, is, is probably, yeah, uh, probably something that you, you regularly deal with. Yeah, I, I think the, the reason I'm saying that is because when I've been working with a younger generation of uh, emerging leaders and missionaries. Mm-hmm. And, and so we, we want to encourage people more instead of, you know, challenging them that you, you're not good enough because of this, because of that. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I think, I think there's, there's, a, there's a dilemma somewhere, but uh, I, I think I'll more tend to be more, um, more kind to, to these kind of people. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Great. Well, Hey, we had one more that, uh, yeah. we wanted to talk about and, uh, I guess a, a challenge that, that you, you see quite a bit within Southeast Asia, people that need to raise support is Christian cultural taboos. Uh, Lord knows I have seen a lot of those on the U S side of things. So, yeah. so I'm curious, at least in your context, uh, what are, what are some of those Christian cultural taboos that, uh, often people get into the, well, you know, you shouldn't do this or we, we, we wouldn't yeah. or couldn't do that. Yeah. I think it's because of from the, um, from the, the, the great testimonies from old time, uh, you know, our, our forerunners, uh, especially from uh, men in China and, and ch- the Chinese as a whole, the, the early days, Chinese Christians, one after another, they have suffered and or endure uh, great um, 
uh, great pain or suffering or, or being not just poor, but persecuted and have that kind of history. Mm-hmm. So if you just ask any, any of this, uh, you know, not old timers, but our forerunners and, and, and veterans, uh, just like my parents and, uh, and, and their generation and generation before then, uh, it, it was, it was really hard for, for them to, really understand why we are nowadays uh, speaking so openly about our needs, you know, our, our financial needs or, 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 you know, and even setting out a, some kind of budget and, and, and it feels like you're not really trusting the Lord. And we all know that these are not, you know, it, and these these are something you can actually argue uh, the whole day, but for them this is just like some of these are like golden rules, like <laughs> you just cannot challenge them. Oh, okay. Without, yeah. So 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 when I say something you couldn't or shouldn't or wouldn't do, yeah, these are the things that. Um, and uh, for example, you 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 sh- you should never post any of your uh, pictures. Uh, on vacation, okay. you should ne- you should never uh, post a, a, a photo of you and your kids like watching an NBA live game somewhere. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you, you shouldn't you shouldn't you shouldn't go to Disney World, or even you do, and you you, you should you should uh, you know you shouldn't post it on Facebook. Man, and that's just, all. I tell you what, th- these are real things. But oh boy, not 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 going to an NBA game. Like, come on, yeah, man. Hey, you can go. You cannot post it. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> oh, I love basketball too much. Okay, I'm tracking. So, I'm tracking. These yeah, are you, you, get, you get you get the point, right? I mean, yes, sir. <laughs> so so people are like, wow, what well, you're driving this kind of car, and my my senior pastor is driving, you know, just a Toyota, and you're driving. Like, or whatever car it is, you know, and, and yeah, that that these are the the taboos that people are saying. Well, you and but but also at the same time, I understand where they're coming from. Sure. Uh, sure. Yeah. And and so so I I don't know. Even for this, I don't really have an answer. And because sometimes I even feel I agree with them. Right. Sure. Yeah. 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 yeah I think there's a tension there, and. Um, I certainly felt that in the U.S. and uh, as well, but but I I, I, can, I can only imagine because I don't know I'm not from Southeast Asia, but I, I imagine it, it, it perhaps feels a little bit more intense in Southeast Asia than at least in the U.S. I think probably the yeah. the majority of our listeners mm. are, are from the U.S., but I know we do have a lot of people from all over the world, and I imagine there is that intensity that can seem a little yeah. bit like the temperature got but- turned up a little bit. Yeah, I, I, I think something different is, you know, Asian culture, or at least in the Chinese culture, we have a very high context, uh, you know, conversation, communication uh, people, which means you don't really talk about it. Mm. But from people's attitude or from people's, you know, feeling, you know, the, the, the words between the lines and people are showing some you know, disagreement with what you do or what you say. Yeah. When yeah. they see that kind of so-called the behavior or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so let me ask you this from the solution side of things. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Ray, I know you well enough that I don't think you would tell uh, global workers that they shouldn't go on vacation or that they, they shouldn't ever go to a basketball game. Um, what, what, I, what I hear you saying is that they probably should, they, they probably shouldn't post about those things on, you know, on social media or whatever. So that it doesn't seem like they're on vacation all the time or that they're bragging, you know, um, at least that, that's what I hear you saying, but I don't hear you saying to don't do that. I just want, I always want, I just want to clarify that. Right. Mm. Yeah. I, I think that's, you know, sometimes taking a break is really helpful for a long-term ministry, you know, no matter what, what, in, in what form, and, mm-hmm. But uh, of course, we 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 are all grown ups. We we take responsibility of the decisions we do, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's a I, I tell you that that's a fine line um, that I think is is certainly true for Southeast Asia. And um, 
I say it's something we're always considering. My, my, my wife, just by way of example, uh, of course, now I'm on the U.S. side and I live in northwest Arkansas. Uh, and so there's certainly some cultural differences there. Uh, but um, we, we we got a, a newer car recently. Uh, it was just mm. time. And, uh, uh, you know, but even right there, you know, I want to jump into explaining why we had to do it. You know, it's like, well, you know, we're saving we got a hybrid, so we're saving almost three hundred and sixty dollars a month that we would have been spending on gasoline. We're not spending that now because, you know, my son has to drive to school. Blah blah blah. And well, we want to get a newer one because the older thing we, you know, we we kept dumping money into getting it fixed, and it reached the point where it was going to save. One. So like, I, I can almost like sit here and go through all the reasons we got this newer vehicle, and. Mm-hmm. Um, Part of me, part of me goes, you know, I shouldn't have to explain that. <laughs> you know, lots of people, lots of people buy new cars like all the time. Like it's a, it's a, it, it's a normal thing globally that people, people get newer cars because older ones break down there. They are, uh, they're, 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 they're a good that diminishes. Um, but also I don't want to sit around spending all my time thinking about that. And I don't want to apologize for doing a normal, healthy thing and, uh, so we, and again, I don't know about Southeast Asian context. I'm just telling you a very American Aaron Babiar family context. Mm. Um, we, we bought a car, um, not, not that long ago where we just said, you know what? It is possible that some people might have an issue with this car. Now it's not a luxury yeah. vehicle, but it's very possible. And if it, and if it is what it is, then, mm. uh, I guess it's possible. We don't think it's likely it's possible. We might lose a supporter or two. Also, we need this car, and if they're going to drop us off just just off of that, then that's okay. God has some other people He's going to bring to our team because we we can't sit here and worry about whether or not somebody likes the color of our car or whether it has uh, you know leather or cloth interior or you know all those <laughs> all those different things. Um, yeah. So I, I wouldn't pretend. I guess what I'm saying is right. I wouldn't pretend that on an American side that we have this all figured out uh, mm. either. Uh, and so I appreciate you sharing that there are some there are some. Uh, yeah, I guess Christian cultural taboos, so to speak, and things that people need to be mm. aware of um, that are there that are challenges on on the Southeast Asian side. So, um, I guess as from from a solution standpoint, um, sounds like you're saying sometimes it's just like, hey, just don't do this; it's not worth it. Is that is, is that correct? No, I, I think for the first solution side, I, I would say this is this is really hard to uh, to fight against. But sometimes you just have to. Uh, to understand uh, where they come from, mm. you know, is this culture or is it's their own personal value, or mm. is it's godly? You know, because it could be all different. You, you come from a very different perspective or different angle, and you you uh, you see it in a different way, or sometimes yeah. the wrong way, or sometimes the right way. Right? Sometimes, yeah. sometimes the uh, uh, you know that kind of maybe not warming, but that, that kind of encouragement or, or challenging uh, words are legit. And you need to really take, uh, take, a, take a second to think about it. But sometimes yeah. it's just totally nonsense, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And we kind of wish it always was, but sometimes it isn't. And so I, I appreciate your, your mm-hmm. wisdom in that. Uh, uh, yeah, we have to consider it. And um, I know that, uh, you know, so, sometimes people, when there is a question about something, they will go to, they will go to a, a trusted wise supporter or two or board mm. member and go, Hey, I need to do this thing. I'm, 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 I'm concerned how it would be viewed. What, what is your perspective? And I think, I think that's wise. I, I think it's mm. wise to, to talk with other, with other people as you, when, when you do come across situations like that. So now with that being said, Ray, I hope you go to an NBA game and take your son at some point. And, uh, Hey, if you take pictures, share them with me. Cause I'll be rooting you on brother. <laughs> 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 yeah, when will be next time? I uh, we just pray that uh, this pandemic can pass one day very soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, I'd love to, I'd love to go with you sometime. But uh, in the meantime, sure. brother, um, hey, this is good. I, I, I think this is a this has been a good conversation. Just just highlighting s- some of the different uh, challenges mm-hmm. and solutions that are be working being worked through from a Southeast Asian context. And uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to. To, to unpack some of this for us. So, um, Ray, it's, it's my habit with, with the podcast to uh, give, the, give the guest or invite the guest to kind of have a final 
word of wisdom. So as you know, we with, with having different listeners, um, and there's probably some that may have even shared this particular podcast because of the topic, they might have shared it with somebody else. Um, what, what's a final word of wisdom as, as a mobilizer who's uh, living and based out of Taiwan? Um, I just want to give you an open mic to to kind of, kind of share some extra perspective for us. So it's all you, my friend. Yeah, I think we just need to uh, uh, be uh, more courageous uh, in terms of support raising. Uh, the reason is not just because uh, we need uh, that finance support from others. I think it's because we are we're a call to to, uh, uh, to do God's work, and we need to be um, be more open of the things we do, and not just raising support or funding from others, but raising awareness for God's work uh, everywhere. I think that's uh, that's a common language as mobilizers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's something I can leave it there. Wonderful. Well, Ray, thank you for being a part of the SRS podcast. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for joining us for this episode. We would love to hear your ideas for future content. Please visit supportraisingsolutions.org slash feedback to share your thoughts and questions. Also, wherever you download your podcast from, be sure to subscribe for future episodes and come back each week to gain more insight into the process of building and maintaining your personal support team.